If you just got a new Mac, congratulations. Let's see how I usually set mine up. Hi, this is David of tech baba a channel I share my experiences on how technology enhances my time with kids and family as a dad. If this is your first time here, welcome. Please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'll go through the initial setup process on my new M1 MacBook Air and share three settings I changed right after. Even though I have the new M1 MacBook Air here, this setup process would apply to most Macs running the latest Big Sur Mac OS. When you open up your Mac for the first time, it turns on automatically since the battery comes already partially charged. Very nice touch by Apple. With the latest Big Sur Mac OS, the old familiar startup tone is back. I love it. Remove the piece of paper protecting the screen. Then we're ready to start. By the way, you can press the escape key to hear how to set up the Mac using VoiceOver. The VoiceOver quick start. VoiceOver speaks descriptions of items on the screen. But we're not going to do that. First, we select the country or region. For me, it's the United States. Next, you can turn on accessibility features, which provide special help if needed. I'm going to select not now. By the way, these settings can be changed later on, so no need to stress over picking the wrong settings now. In fact, there's some settings you may prefer to skip for now and set up later, such as Apple Pay since it takes some time to verify a credit card. Okay, let's keep going. Next, it'll ask us to connect to a Wi-Fi network. Just pick your SSID and enter your password. Hit continue here. Next is a reminder on Apple's data and privacy policies. I like how Apple is very respective of our privacy. And this is just a reminder that this icon will appear when Apple feature asks to use our personal information. There's a link here to learn more. I usually just click continue here. Next is migration assistant. Here we can choose to transfer data from a Mac time machine backup or startup disk. We can even transfer data from a Windows PC. This is a great tool if you're upgrading from an older Mac or PC. This tool will automatically move files, applications, and even settings directly from an old Mac or from a Time Machine backup. Once done, this new Mac will look and work exactly like the old Mac. If you're coming from a Windows PC, it'll copy all the data files over. I love this feature as I often upgrade and then pass down the old Macs to the kids at home. Maybe I'll do another video on the migration process, but for now, we're going to set this Mac up as a new Mac without migration. So we'll hit Not Now here on the lower left corner. Next, you will ask us to sign in our Apple ID and password. Apple ID is the account we use for everything we do with Apple. App Store, Apple TV app, Apple Bookstore, iCloud, which is a big one, messages, and more. It'll be the same account we use on iOS devices as well, such as the iPad or an iPhone or Apple Watch. If you don't have one yet, there's an option to create a new Apple ID. It's free to set one up. Here you can see the privacy icon here on the bottom because it's asking for your personal information. I already have an Apple ID and I'll sign in later, so let's do set up later here. And confirm that we're going to skip this for now. The next screen is the terms and conditions, which I never really read. Maybe I should one of these days, but I usually just hit agree and continue. And to be sure, it asks you to agree again. Now we can create a user account to sign in this Mac with. It says full name here, but you can use anything you like. You can also change the icon here. I'll go ahead and sign in as tech for Baba. This will be the name for the home directory as well. Okay, and then just put in a password. Again, here you could pick any password you like, hopefully a secure one, so no one else can guess your password and log into your Mac. Enter it twice, and you can give it a hint if you like. And then continue here on the lower right corner. Next is the Find My Device feature. Apple just updated the Find My app to allow third-party products to use the finding capabilities of the Apple's network, just in time for the air tags they finally announced. By the way, let me know in the comments below what you're tagging if you're getting the new air tags. In any case, with this turn on, you can locate the Mac on the map. You can send it messages or remote lock or erase it if needed. It really prevents anyone from using it if it's lost or stolen. So I hit continue here. Next, we can choose to continue with the Express Setup. For the OS to use default for settings such as location service and analytics sharing. I usually go with customized settings here on the lower left. 
So here you can enable location services so OS and apps know where you are based on the IP address. This is especially useful for apps like Maps, so I usually pick Enable and Continue. Next, there's an option to share map analytics with Apple. This data helps Apple improve its products and services. It's anonymous, but I usually choose not to share it, so I uncheck this option and hit continue. Next is screen time. The OS can monitor and report how I use my computer, just like the screen time on the iPhone. It shows you how much time you spend on each app. I like to use it to remind myself not to spend too much time on the computer or certain apps like YouTube. <laughs> so I hit continue here. Next, you have a choice to enable Siri. I don't use it much, but I leave it on for the few times I do. So I hit enable here and continue. To set it up, it'll ask you to read a few words or sentences to better recognize you after we hit continue. Hey, hey open the documents folder. Hey, show my downloads. Hey, what's the weather? Hey, what does the rest of my day look like? That's it. It says the series now ready. We'll hit continue. Here again, you have the option to share the audio recordings with Apple. Again, it'd be anonymous, but I usually choose not now. Continue. Next is Touch ID Setup. This is a very convenient security feature to unlock the MacBook, approve app installation, or auto-filling passwords. I always set this up, so I'll hit continue. It'll ask you to place the finger on the fingerprint reader, which is the power button. Lifting it up and down for a few times for the reader to store your fingerprint. I usually use my index finger first. Each account can store up to three fingerprints for a total of five fingerprints on a Mac. Hit continue. Next, we could choose either light or dark mode. There's also an auto option for the Mac to change it automatically depending on the time of day. I prefer the dark mode all the time, so that's what I usually pick. Next is True Tone Display. I like how the True Tone adjusts the display color to fit the ambient light conditions so everything looks more natural. It's much more pleasing to me, so I usually enable this. And again, these settings you can change later on, so if you don't like it after some time, you can turn it off. And that's it. Now that we've gone through the initial setup, there are three settings that I like to change right away. First is tap to click on the trackpad. These MacBooks have the best trackpad in the business, so it's worthwhile to go through how to use the trackpad. You can find most settings under System Preferences, and here's the one for the trackpad. It's great how it has built-in videos to show you how each gesture works. The one setting I change immediately is this tap to click option. Instead of having to physically click the trackpad to select, you can also lightly tap it with this option on. You can still click if you like, but now you can just lightly tap. Next, under this Apple dock, I like to enable an option that will minimize windows into the application icon. By default, when you minimize a window on the Mac, all the minimized window go to the right of the dock. For example, let's open a couple of Safari windows. Minimize them. See how they both go to the right side of the dock? Even if it's from the same app, they don't get stacked together. And since I like to open up a lot of windows, it gets very cluttered here on the right. I actually prefer how Windows PCs minimize these windows separately into their own icons. So here's how you can set that up on the Mac. You can go back to System Preferences under Dock and Menu Bar. Here's an option to minimize windows into application icon. Once you enable that, see if I minimize this window, it goes behind its own icon instead. Let me do that for the Safari windows. See how it goes into the Safari icon? And here's the other Safari window. There it goes. The apps with at least one window open will have a dot on the bottom indicating so. And just like the PC, you can double click on the icon and the two windows will show up on the menu for you to pick from. 
And while we're in the dock and menu bar preferences, I'd also like to turn on magnification. It's not needed, but it just looks cool. <laughs> okay, now that we have the right side of the dock nice and clean, I like to make my third change, which is to drag the applications folder here to the right side of the dock. I like how the Mac OS has many ways to do the same thing. So here's one way to do that. Open up the Finders app. You can see applications folder listed here on the left. You just click and hold, drag the application folder to the right side of the dock and let it go. And there it is. It now shows up and lives on the dock. The reason I do this is so I can easily access all my applications here from the dock. You can also access all your applications here with the launch pad icon. But I like how the applications folder has an option to show all your applications in a list format. Perhaps because I end up with too many apps. You can turn on that option by double clicking on the applications icon and choose list here. Now if you just tap on the icon because you turn on the tap to click, all the applications will show up in the list view. It may not seem helpful, but once I start to add many applications, a list view is much easier to find the application. Thanks for watching. If you find this video helpful, please help me by smashing the like button and share. What are the first settings you change on your new Mac? I'd love to know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on how technology can enhance our life with kids and family, please subscribe and turn on the bell to be notified when I put out my next video. I'll see you in the next one. Until then, cherish each moment.